Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen As-salatu wassalamu ala Sayyidil Anbiya'i wal Mursaleen wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in Amma ba'd fa'awuzu billahi minash shaytanir rajim Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Al-lazina yaskuruna Allaha qiyamaw wa quudaw wa ala junubihim إن الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا سلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما تحب وترضى بأن تسل عليه صلاة وسلام عليك يا سيدي يا حبيب يا رسول الله يقين والي یقین والے کہاں سے چلے کہاں پہنچے یقین والے کہاں سے چلے کہاں پہنچے جو اہل شک ہے جو اہل شک ہے اگر مگر میں رہتے ہیں جو اہل شک ہے اگر مگر میں رہتے ہیں خدا کے نور کو خدا کے نور کو اپنی طرح سمجھتے ہیں خدا کے نور کو اپنی طرح سمجھتے ہیں یہ کون لوگ ہیں یہ کون لوگ ہیں یہ کس کے اثر میں رہتے ہیں یہ کون لوگ ہیں یہ کس کے اثر میں رہتے ہیں ملائکہ بھی ملائکہ بھی عقیدت سے دیکھتے ہیں انہیں اللہ اکبر یا رسول اللہ ملائکہ بھی عقیدت سے دیکھتے ہیں انہیں جو خوش نصیب جو خوش نصیب نبی کے نگر میں رہتے ہیں جو خوش نصیب نبی کے نگر میں رہتے ہیں اور یقین والے کی بات چلی تو جس نے اس در پہ گردن جکائی جس نے اس در پہ گردن جکائی بن گیا وہ محبوب الہی جس نے اس در پہ گردن جکائی بن گیا وہ محبوب الہی دیکھو کلیر میں جا دیکھو کلیر میں جا خاجہ صابر پیا ہے یگانا خاجہ صابر پیا ہے یگانا اور یا میرے بابا صاحب تیرا کاہم رہے آستانا تیرا کاہم رہے آستانا خاجہ گنج شکر خاجہ گنج شکر کر کرم کی نظر خاجہ گنج شکر کر کرم کی نظر تیرا قاہم رہے آستانا اللہم صلی اللہ سیدنا محمد وعلی آلی سیدنا محمد کما تحب و ترضا بیان تسلی علیہ صلاة و السلام علیک یا سیدی یا حبیب یا رسول اللہ All praise due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Choices, blessings, darood and salam in abundance upon the last of the divine messengers, the beloved of Allah, the cause of creation, the dispenser of love, <coughs> Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Most respected Hazrat Sayyid Ghulam Mustafa Sahib Sahib Zada Son of the illustrious Piro Murshad of the Chisti Sabri Jahangiri Silsila Hazrat Sayyid Khali Chabawa Rahmatullah Ali Respected Ulema, respected Hufaz, elders, brothers, sisters, beloved children Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Rakatuh it is indeed an honor and a privilege for me to be present here with you to celebrate the milad of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to partake in the urs of Baba Sahib rahmatullah alayhi and to be sitting here with many of my brothers who are linked to the Silsila Chistia and also all other brothers from all other Salasil. 
The goal is one. The goal is one. The Holy Quran speaks of وَأَنَّا إِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ الْمُنْتَحَىٰ Verily, my goal is to reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Aur saare jaha ke nazro se me gir gaya to kya? Saare jaha ke nazro se me gir gaya to kya? Achcha hua ke tere nazar se gira nahi. Allah. Achcha hua ke tere nazar se gira nahi. During the time of the Holy Prophet Wasallam's physical stay on this universe, he has not left. During his physical stay on this universe, there was a group of poets in Makkah. The Arabs were known for their poetry, Sher Shairi. And at that time, the propaganda machinery was worked through poets. Poets used to control public thinking with their poetry. So there were non-Muslim poets who used to mock at Astaghfirullah, the Holy Prophet Muhammad Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Holy Prophet ﷺ used the same methodology of poetry. The Holy Prophet ﷺ used the same methodology of poetry. Where he used to say to Hazrat Hassan bin Thabit radiallahu ta'ala, O Hassan, sit on member e Rasul. Sit on member e Rasul and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to sit in the audience. And Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to make dua that Ya Allah assist Hassan with Jibreel Amin to give the answer. And one of the poetry, a lot of people accuse us that we people come with India, Pakistan, Islam. And this Sher Shahiri, Naat, Sama, Wagera wasn't in the time of the Holy Prophet That's my aim, to try and make you understand this today. Hazrat Hassan bin Sabit sits on the mimbar and he says, Hajayta Muhammadan fa'ajabtu anhu. Arabic Sher. I'm reading it for you in Arabic so that you know this happened in the time of the Holy Prophet Wa in the lie. What is he saying? He's saying, O Kuffar, you mocked Muhammad وسلم, but I reply on his behalf. And he says, Jazai wa in the zaqal jazau, there is reward in this, in defending the status of my beloved Muhammad Mustafa. Then he said, Hajayta Muhammadan Barran Taqiyan. You satirized, you mocked this virtuous and righteous personality, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Rasulullah Shi'imahul Waqaw, the Apostle of Allah, whose nature is Wafaw, truthfulness. Wafa. Then he says a beautiful thing. This is our Aqidah of Ahl Sunnah wa Jama'ah. And Hazrat Hassan bin Thabit is reading it in front of Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he's saying, فَإِنَّ Abi wa walidahu wa irdi." He says, my father, his father, and the honor of my family. La irdi Muhammadin minkum wikau A protection for the honor of Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now this hadith and many hadiths regarding Hazrat Hassan bin Sabit, who is the poet of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is reported by all of them, nearly are reported by Hazrat Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu ta'ala and her. Why I mention this is, there was a time 
when once Hazrat Aisha Siddiqa was left behind in the caravan and a young Sahaba had found her and brought her back and at this time some of the Sahaba started a rumor which was actually started by Munafiks but some Sahaba fell a prey to it that Hazrat Aisha Astaghfirullah had an affair with this young man but Allah sent down Wahi to defend the honor of Ummah, our mother, the mother of the faithful and the wife of Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. One of the persons who got involved in the scandal was Hazrat Hassan bin Sabit. From that time, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not want to look at his face. So he came to Hazrat Aisha Siddiqa and he said, Please ask Rasulullah Sallallahu to make me maaf. I have written a naat in his honor. Listen to it. When she heard it, she heard the naat and she went to the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam pleading, Ya Rasulullah, I know you are cross with Hassan. But he had spread rumors about me and I am now interceding that you must forgive him because of what a beautiful naat he has written in your praise. So naat ke sadke mein iski maafi bhi hoge. You understand? He, was, he had been made maaf. And it is reported, this is what I am telling you, both in Bukhari and Muslim. Meaning it is agreed upon. So naat and poetry played a part in the life of the Holy Prophet وسلم, his Sahaba and the wives of the Holy Prophet وسلم, it affected their hearts if the Naat did not affect her heart why she would have gone and asked the Holy Prophet to forgive somebody who scandalized her so it, in Bukhari in the Musnad of Imam Ahmad in Tabarani, in Bayhaqi it is reported that Al Aswad ibn Suray said, I came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, Ya Rasulullah, I have written naat in your praise. May I read it for you? The Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa turned around and said, As far as Allah is concerned, He should be praised. So start with the hamd of Allah and then read the naat. Meaning, this is humility, humbleness. He's not saying I shouldn't be praised. He's saying Allah should be praised first. Because all praises of mine is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then, he recited the nats in front of the Holy Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the Holy Prophet listened to it. So to listen to nat is sunnate rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then, it is reported that when Makkah was conquered and the first time Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is going into Masjid al-Haram in Makkah after coming from Medina, conquered the whole of Makkah, victorious. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is sitting on a camel, Kaswa, his camel. Anything that comes into contact with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, nisbah, Nothing can be like it. No camel in the world can be like Kaswa because Huzur Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sat on this camel. There are many daughters in the world, but no daughter can be like Bibi Fatima Zahra because she is the daughter of Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Many books have come in the world, Torah, Injil, Zabur, but no book can be like the Holy Quran. Because it came to the heart of Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There are many children in the world, but no children can be like the children of Holy Prophet Muhammad Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because tu hai aine noor, tera sab gharana noor ka. Aur tere nasle paak mein hai bacha bacha noor ka. And genetics also teaches you this today. In the genes it runs. You understand? So, he's sitting on Kaswa. And, 
Kaswa is been led by Hazrat Abdullah bin Rawaha radiallahu ta'ala on foot holding the bridle of the camel and he's walking into Masjid al-Haram and he's reading the Naat of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Hazrat Abu Bakr, Hazrat Umar, Hazrat Ali and Hazrat Usman on both sides of the camel. Behind them are all the Sahaba and they're going in a procession and the leader of the procession is reading a Naat. What is this? Julus. What? Julus. And they led with a Naat going into the Kaaba Sharif. So our Aqeedah is in accordance with Quran and Sunnah. And this hadith, I have named it where it is for you. It's my habit because people say that these Sunnis pull hadith out of the bag. So Tirmizi Sharif, Nisai Sharif, Sunan e Qubra, Imam Asqalani mentions it, Qurtubi mentions it, and I have all the references for anyone who'd like to check it up. There's no time to go into it all. Then, <clears throat> These narrations, what I am giving you, belongs to a special chapter in the deen. Babe Muhabba. What is it called? Chapter of love. Because Chistis are people of love. So we speak on the chapter of love. Okay? Now, you know it said that there is no other silsila that has love like silsila Chistia. And I can say it with pride. You know why? So much of love that Baba Saab had to flow it out in three directions. Nizami, Sabari, Jamali. But when they make us cross, we cut off one branch also. Those who understand, understand. Then Baba Saab spread it to Khwaja Nizamuddin Aulia, who gave it in an overdose. To Amir Khusru radiallahu ta'ala. He says on the day of Qayyama when Allah asked me what have you brought. I will say I've brought the loving heart of Amir Khusru. Yes, that's all I brought. Hmm? dar de dil Compassion, love. And what did Hazrat Amir Khusru say? kafir e ishkam Musalmani mara darkar nist. Every vein of my I am a kafir in love. Oh Mullah, your Musalmani I don't need. Your Musalmani of Fatwa Bazi, of Kufr, of Haram, of Shirk, I don't need. Every vein of mine has become like a musical instrument. And when you play it, you will hear my beloved song coming out of it. Yar, yar, yar. So, if the Khusrawi Silsila had to spread, already the fatwas are coming. If that Silsila had to spread, I don't know how many fatwas would have come on us. What love there was there. What love. So, these are from the chapters of love. One of the poets, one of the poets, Qab bin Zuhair, who used to satirize the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. A lot of satire. Mock. After the conquest of Makkah, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Sahaba went to kill these poets. Not that they were murderers. You have to close down the propaganda machine. You know, if war breaks out, one of the things we'd have to do is close down all these uh, broadcasting centers that broadcast trash and propaganda into our homes via the television. That's a long term. I don't want to get into politics. But that's part of the strategy of war. So Hazrat Kaab bin Zuhair, who later accepted Islam, knew that they are coming for him. So he ran to Medina. He hid in one of the houses of the Muslims. He said, you know what? I've accepted Islam in my heart. But if I go to Rasulullah, will he forgive me? He said, go. He is Rahmatullah Alameen. He'll definitely forgive you. So he disguises himself. He goes into the masjid and he holds the hand of the Holy Prophet. He acts as if he says, 
Ya Rasulullah, if somebody has committed blasphemy against you in a state of kufr, not in a state of so-called Islam, and now he comes to ask you for maaf, will you forgive him and accept him in the fold of Islam? The Holy Prophet said, yes, why not? He said, even if it's Kaab bin Zuhair, he said, of course. Then he took off the scarf. He said, Ya Rasulullah, I am Kaab bin Zuhair. Hazrat Umar got up with a sword out. Because this was the enemy. He said, leave him alone, Ya Umar. We accept him. He said, Ya Rasulullah, I've composed a knot, 58 lines. This has a story on its own. This knot is called Banat Swad. And it's done in Lamia. It's one of the longest Hasidas in rhyme called Lamia. It ends with Lam. Time of Holy Prophet. Still a famous in Arabic literature studied by students of Arabic in poetry. What he said. So Holy Prophet said, let us listen. In Masjid al Nabawi. So he's reading. He says, Nubitta anna Rasulullahi aw adani. I was told that the Messenger of Allah had threatened that he is going to retaliate against me. This is part of the Naat. I was told that Rasulullah sallallahu will retaliate against me. Wa al afu in the Rasulullahi mamulu. But with the Messenger of Allah, I know I'll find pardon. I know I, these are the two main shares I want to read. Meaning even the kuffar knew this was Rahmatullil Alameen. Now listen to this part. Now we come into the main sections. Then he reads, he says, Inna Rasula la nurun yastada'u bihi. Indeed the messenger of Allah is a light from whom light is sought. What he's saying? He's saying, Inna Rasula la nurun yastada'u bihi. He is a nur from whom others get nur. So, what was the aqidah of the Sahaba? That the Holy Prophet is nur. That's our aqidah. Okay? Muhannadan min suyufillahi masulu. Masululu, the unsheathed sword of Allah. And what he said, of the finest Hindustani make, Indian make, with the best soldiers to come from India. When Holy Prophet heard this verse, La Nurun Yastada Ubihi, he is a Nur from whom others get Nur. Holy Prophet went into ecstasy, which is called Wajd. He pulled his shawl off his back and he threw it towards Qab bin Zuhair. Hazrat Qab bin Zuhair was fortunate. This is the first Qasida Burda. Before Mawla Ya Salli wa Sallim Daiman Abadan. This is from the time of Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That shawl was kept in the family of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Of Hazrat Qab bin Zuhair. Passed down. Eventually Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala acquired the shawl. Every khalif of the Muslim world used to carry the shawl of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam in a golden casket and go to war against the enemies. Every time they carried this, they won the war. A baraka of the burda, the shawl of Holy Prophet. So up till now the shawl is available for ziyarat. Where in Turkey, in Istanbul. On the 12th of Rabi al Awal, they open the casket. People line up for miles. They'll do it this year again. And what they read? As salatu wa salamu alayka ya Sayyidi, ya Habibi, ya Rasulullah. Lines, lines. And they make ziyarat of this burda. Okay? How did the Holy Prophet react to share and shairi poetry? That's the point ecstatically how he reacted ecstatically so wajd unveiling rucks 
listening to poetry is part of Islamic tradition. Let me give you from Holy Quran first. First. It is stated in Surah Araf that Musa alayhi salam wanted to see Allah. So he went to Mount Sinai and he spent 40 days and 40 nights. Then he said, and he put his plea to Allah, Rabbi Arani, O oh Allah, I want to see you. So Allah spoke to him. After 40 days and 40 nights, this is real chilla, which the Sufis practiced, coming from the sunnah of Musa alayhi salam. Allah spoke to him. Allah said, Ya Musa, Lan tarani. Allahu Akbar. Allah is telling him, O oh Musa alayhi salam, you can't see me. But the fact that Allah spoke to him, and he heard the beautiful voice of Allah, to listen is called Sama'at. Sama'at. To listen to beautiful voices is called sama. I can speak, I have license to speak on this. Molvi Saabs are in trouble. Hum fakir ke olade. You understand? Right? It's called sama. In sama you get kal. Meaning statement. When he heard the statement from Musa alayhi salam, it was so beautiful, the voice of Allah, that Hazrat Musa alayhi salam got up, according to the Mufassirs, he stood up, he went into wajd, he spun around, and nine times he said, Rabbi Arani, Rabbi Arani, Rabbi Arani, Oh my Allah, you have spoken to me, now please show yourself to me, show yourself to me. How many times? Nine times. So, Kal, statement, Ashadin, Hal, state. And if anyone tells me that words can't change your state, something's wrong with them. You can be in a very good mood in the morning, get up, very happy, take a walk. Let one guy swear you in the street. Your happy mood will turn to a bad mood. Right or wrong? Majority of us, all of us can't control our nafs. What will happen? One statement, one word changes your state. Statement changes your state from happy to sad. Happy to angry. If a normal human being statement can change your state, what about Allah's statement? <laughs> what about Allah's statement? So therefore, call ashes in hal. Okay, this is not part of our topic, but I'll finish it quickly. A Nabi's dua never made rad. Nabi's dua never goes unanswered. So Allah said, O oh Musa, lang parani, you can't see me. Tu ne dek sakta hai ya Musa alayhi salam. Dekne wala aju aane wala hai. Adam ki nasal me aane wala hai. Lekin dekne wale samaj jayege Adam ki asal bhi hai. Adam ki asal, the essence that created Adam is him also. So on the night of Miraj, when Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam met Allah, when Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam met Allah, how many namazes were given? How many namazes were given? Okay, all these years we're hearing in the masjid, 50 namaz was given. As if, as if, Allah didn't know that they won't be able to read 50 namaz. You understand? That's the truth. Sunnis, we can't read five too. Or in namaz ke shauki in whole day they'll spend in the masjid. If 50 was there. So Musa alayhi salam had to make wasila. No, Allah knew. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made an excuse for Musa alayhi salam. What happened? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa came to the first heaven below the arsh. Who he met? Musa alayhi salam. He said, Musa alayhi salam said, Ya Rasulullah, go back to Allah reduced to 45. The excuse was for Musa alayhi salam. Musa alayhi salam at Tur, in a state of wajd and hal, when Allah had spoke to him, nine times had made the dua, Rabbi Arani, Oh Allah, I want to see you. Allah is answering it on the night of Miraj. Allah says, look in the heart of my Mustafa. When you look in the heart of my Mustafa, it is the only place where my tajalliyat can be captured. Qalbe Mustafa. If the qalb, the heart, the nucleus of the soul of the ordinary man, qalbul mu'min arshillah, what must be the heart of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa so when Musa alayhi salam looked into this heart, he saw Allah. He can't see directly. Went back. Came back with 45 namaz nine times. So the excuse was for Musa alayhi salam's dua to be answered. He had to see it in the mazhar, the reflector. And the reflector is the heart of Muhammad Rasulullah. Therefore, when Holy Prophet came back from Miraj, what he said? O oh, Abu Bakr, he who has seen me has seen Allah. He who has seen me has seen. So the first wajd, according to Holy Quran, took place when Musa alayhi salam heard the beautiful voice of Allah. Now, <clears throat> I come to another one. It is stated... <clears throat> Let me come to the main points due to a lack of time. It is stated, this hadith is in Bukhari, this hadith is in Muslim Sharif. But let me give you the prelude to the hadith. Holy Prophet وسلم, came to Madinatul Munawwara. He arrived on the Hijrah. Many reports say 12th Rabi al-Awwal also. From Makkah to Medina. From other hadiths we learn that the Ansar were fond of singing and music. Because when Hazrat Siddiqa had gone for a wedding in the Ansar, Holy Prophet told her, didn't you take a singer with you? You know they like singing, must take a kawal and go. <laughs> take a singer and go. Call, kawal, that same thing, call, somebody who sings. Now, when Holy Prophet وسلم, reached Madina Munawwara in the Hijrah, the Ansar were happy, they were playing on the duff and they were singing Tala Al Badru Alayna. But people only talk of that. They were African Muslims from Abyssinia, Ethiopia, who were slaves in Arabia. Okay, they were playing on a big leather drum, these African Congo drums. And they were dancing on one leg with spears in their hands. You know, toy toy? You see them doing it up till now? When they're happy, what they do? The Africans, Muslims, what they do? Even Africans in general, what do they do? Toy toy. When they cross, toy toy. One leg. Dancing on one leg. Now, the Holy Prophet was amused. So he said, who is these people? He said, Ya Rasulullah, they heard about you only. And they heard that Bilal Kala hai, lekin Ala hai. They heard that Eki Saf me kare huye Mahmood o Ayaz. Na koi banda raha, na koi banda nawaz. That when you accept Islam, the slave and the master becomes free men, one. So before you came, they accepted Islam, Ya Rasulullah. Now they are ecstatic that they saw you. So, the Holy Prophet was amused. He said, MashaAllah, what a way they show love. 
So he told them, oh, and now the words they used to use to address the African Muslims. You understand? For example, we have certain terms we use for foreigners also. I don't want to repeat it, certain people get offended. But we have a special term we use to refer to certain foreigners, you understand? So, they used to say in Arabia, Bani Arfida, the children of Africa. The children of, or the sons of Africa. So every Eid al-Adha, these African Muslims used to stand in the Masjid al-Nabawi by the door of Holy Prophet Sallallahu house. Now you know Masjid al-Nabawi? Those who've been there? Okay? You know Jannat ka Tukra? Riyazul Jannah? You know the door that opens from the Rosa Mubarak, now it's closed. But the door used to come out in Riyazul Jannah. That was the door of Holy Prophet. A curtain used to separate the house where the Rosa Mubarak is the house. And it should open to the Riyazul Jannah because that place became Jannah because Holy Prophet Mubarak Qadam touched it all the time. From the house to the member, from the member to the house, house to the member. Holy Prophet Mubarak Qadam touched it, that place became Jannah. You understand? Nisbat ho gai huzur se. Jannati. Chisti bahasti. Nisbat ho gai huzur se. Jannati. You understand? Now, the, the Bani Arfida are waiting for Holy Prophet to open his curtain. They're standing on Jannat ka tukra. Imam Bukhari records it in this chapter on Masajid. Which chapter? Masajid. Bukhari Sharif. Please understand Bukhari Sharif properly. Eh? Be ishke nabi jo parte hai Bukhari, Bukhar aata hai unko. Bukhar nahi, Bukhari nahi aati. So, ishki roshri mein paro. Now. And he includes it in a sub-chapter called Playing in the Masjid. What's the subchapter? Playing in the masjid. Allah bless him. Alhamdulillah. Because he interpreted what they had done as a war dance, spear play. What it is? Spear play. But on analyzing this hadith, now let me tell you what happened. They were waiting for Holy Prophet. Muslim has it. The Siha Sitta, many hadith kitabs have it. Ibn Khasir, who fell under the influence of Ibn Taymiyyah, of the Wahhabis, also mentioned it in his tafsir. Tirmizi Sharif has it. Many hadith, I have all the references now. <clears throat> and I've checked it up properly. When the Holy Prophet ﷺ opened the curtain, the African Muslims who were there, they went ecstatic when they saw the Holy Prophet They start toy toying with their spears and they start shouting out something loud. Holy Prophet was amused and he's so happy, they love me so much. Allahu Akbar. So he said, Aisha, come here. She came behind him by the door now. The house of Hazrat Aisha is Rosa Mubarak. So Hazrat Aisha Siddiqa says, I grabbed the, it's reported by her this hadith, I grabbed the Mubarak shoulder of Holy Prophet I took my cheek and put it next to his Mubarak cheek. And he held me like this and he said, see Aisha, how they love me, the Bani Arfida, the people of Africa, the sons of Africa. Now Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala comes rushing into the masjid. And he says, stop it. What are you all doing? The Masjid of Allah and that too in front of the Messenger of Allah. Holy Prophet said, Oh Umar, wait. Don't stop them. This is the day of Eid. Happiness. And this is how the Bani Arfida express their happiness. Other versions of the Hadith said, Let the Christians and the Jews know that Islam has flexibility in it. Has what? Flexibility, meaning, O oh Umar, you are an Arab, 
And Arabs don't express their happiness like this. But leave them alone. For they are Africans. And Africans express their happiness like this. You understand? Another version of the hadith said, Holy Prophet Sallallahu lifted Hazrat Aisha Siddiqa up went in between this Bani Arfida and they were right round him toy toying with their spears. The children of Medina heard the noise in the masjid and ran in and children start imitating. They're going round the Holy Prophet toy toying and what are they screaming out? Muhammad Abdun Saleh, Muhammad Abdun Saleh, Muhammad Abdun. What are they saying? Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the most righteous slave of Allah. And a, a very significant point. Why are they saying it? They say, we thought we were slaves. And oh, you Arabs, you thought we were lowly. There's our leader, the greatest slave of Allah. Huh? He's the slave of Allah. And today he's taken us out from your slavery. And he's made us also the slaves of Allah. Muhammad Abdun. Saleh. So, can you put this chapter, this hadith under playing in the masjid? Can you play in this masjid? No, haram. Can you play in Masjid and Nabawi? That too, can you play on Riyazul Jannah? And if they were doing a war dance, big maidan was outside for do their war dance, big ground. So this was a spontaneous reaction of what? Of seeing the Mubarak face of Holy Prophet That they went into wajd and they expressed their happiness in this way. And the Holy Prophet said, leave them alone. These are the sons of Africa and this is how they express their happiness. How we know this? You see, you got to present an argument. Where was the first hijratu? When the Muslims were being troubled, where did they send the Muslims first to? To Abyssinia. The delegation was led by Jafar ibn Abi Talib, Hazrat Ali's brother, Hazrat Jafar. And he had stayed in Abyssinia for 10 years. How many years? 10 years. People come here from India, Pakistan. After 10 years, they can speak English. Some of them, you speak to them, you think they're from South Africa. Because you take on the, the mannerisms. You understand? So when Hazrat Jafar came back to Madinatul Munawwara, himself, Hazrat Ali, and Hazrat Zaid bin Haris had a small argument about who will adopt a certain orphan. Allah, but we have arguments about Pesah. They have an argument about who is going to adopt the orphan. So they go to go to Holy Prophet ﷺ. Holy Prophet ﷺ says, Oh, what's the problem? He says, Ya Rasulullah, we have an argument. Who's going to adopt this orphan? So Holy Prophet turns to Zaid bin Harisa, his, his freed slave, his adopted son. He says, Zaid, Anta Mawlai. You are my, my, my Mawlai. You are my love by Allah. Oh. Then he turns to Hazrat Jafar. He says, Ya Jafar. No one looks more than me in physical appearance and in character. No one is, is more same like me, has my similarity than you. And he turns to Hazrat Ali, he says, Ali, you are to me like how Harun salam, was to Musa, salam. you my deputy, man kuntu mawla. you are my deputy. How they reacted. How they reacted. The moment he said this to Hazrat Zaid, he got up, held his heart, and started spinning around. When he said this to Hazrat Jafar, Hazrat Jafar got onto one leg and started hopping around the Holy Prophet. And Hazrat Ali, when he said this to Hazrat Ali, he went into watch. Three people are making watch around the Holy Prophet. When they finished, when they finished, they asked Hazrat Jafar. You show your happiness in a strange way. What's this hopping on one leg? He says, Ya Rasulullah, I learned this in Africa. This is how the Abyssinians honor their leader. 
So I am ordering my leader in this way. Now, remember, Islam didn't come to make us all Arab Muslims. Islam didn't come to make us all Arab Muslims. What Islam came to do? Islam came to give you Tawheed and Risalat. Islam came you to free you from the bondages of slavery to anything else except Allah. But many people who preach Tawheed today are bonded to money. Are bonded to oppressive regimes in Saudi Arabia. Are bonded to people who take bonds from the bank. Are bonded to people who are slaves of an interest-centered economy. This is also shirk. You understand? Khirat bi keh to diya la ila to kya hasil? Dilo niga ha musalma nahi to kuch bi nahi. Dilo niga ha musalma nahi to kuch bi nahi. So, Islam said, you know. Islam is saying that this is Islam. It's clear like a river water. Depending on which rock we flow over, we take that color. So you'll find Chinese Muslims different from Turkish Muslims. Turkish Muslims different from Malaysian Muslims. Malaysian Muslims different from Indian Muslims. Now, did the Indian Muslims, we India Pakistani accused, we stand accused, that's the case. Ke raks kar rahe, sama ko sun rahe, these people are doing haram things. Hmm? Is gar ko aag lag gai, gar ki chirag se nowadays lately too. Hmm? Couple of chirags from our house putting fatwa on us also. Now, Baba Saab. Fariduddin Ganjay Shakar radiallahu ta'ala in the year 571, 664 AH 571 of the English era, what year are we in now? I mean 1175 of the English era, what year are we in now? 2000 and? So more than how long? 900 years? Long term? Long term? Okay the last few periods of his life, days of his life, years, he came to a place called Ajodan. That's known today as Park Patan Sharif. The people start flocking around Baba Sahib. The local Malvi Sahibs got jealous. So they wrote one letter to Multan. Multan is a big city closest to Park Patan. You know Multan Sharif? They said there's a man living in our town Listen to what they wrote. He listens to music. If he didn't listen, they won't write he listens to music. Because some people say, no, they didn't listen to music. You all came out with it today. What was written there? He listens to music and songs. And he dances. What do the great ulema of Multan have to say about this man? They weren't stupid Malvis also. Understand? So they wrote back. They told this man, tell us his name. <laughs> so when they said, Shaykh al-Islam, Farid al-Fard, Mas'ud Ganja Shakar radiallahu ta'ala, Malvi sah said, maaf karna. Anyone else will pass the fatwa. Not on this man. Not on this man. Now, to cut a long story short, they, after that troubled his children also, the landlords and everything. So one of the sons got fed up. No sons, they treat their fathers. No kadar some of them got. You understand? Wives too. Hmm? The Hazrat, hey, all the disciples will sit around and say, Yeh ka se Hazrat bana. Huh? Understand? Anyway, this one son came and said, You so famous father, everyone flocks around you. This person here, this landlord, is giving us a hard time because of you. And he's accusing us of singing and dancing and kawali, putting up the taxes. 
Baba Sahib just lifted his asa up and he said, he's troubling you. May he perish and throw it down. Same time that man fell down, got sick and died. You understand? Meaning, at that time also, the mullahs were traveling the chisti sufis. About kawali and dancing and singing. Now, there's a kitab called Nizami Bansari. Khaja Hassan Nizami translated into English from Persian many years ago. The original kitab is called Chahal Roza. What is it called? 700 years ago, this book was written by a disciple of Nizamuddin Aulia, who was a Hindu. His name was Rajkumar Hardev. Rajkumar, the prince of Hardev. He fell in love with Pavasa. He heard Nizamuddin Aulia's name only, fell in love. Came to meet him, spent many days with him, accepted Islam also. And he kept a diary. What did he keep? A diary. And in this diary, he records something. Now let me give you a background. Baba Fariduddin Ganja Shakar's two grandsons, Khwaja Sayyid Muhammad and his brother had become the murids of Nizamuddin Aulia. Meaning the peer's grandsons became the murid of the murid and khalifa. And they record in Nizami Bansari, Rajkumar Hardev, later his name was Muhammad Amin radiallahu ta'ala he recording an incident that happened when they were traveling with Nizamuddin Aulia. Now listen carefully. Written from a diary of a man who I witnessed what had happened. Okay? Let me read it to you. Once Hazrat, that is Nizamuddin Aulia, was traveling from Ghiyasapur to Delhi to visit the Mazar of Hazrat Khwaja Qutbuddin Bakhtiyar Kaki. Okay? Accompanied by myself, who? Rajkumar Hardev, my brother, no, I mean Khwaja Sayyid Muhammad, my brother Sayyid Musa, Hazrat Amir Khusru, Khwaja Hassan Sanjari, and Molana Nasiruddin Udi. That's Khwaja Nasiruddin Chirag. Okay? Along our way, we came across a well being driven by a pair of cattle and watering the fields nearby. A man stood by the well, emptying the leather drums. They were bringing up the water from down, and it used to come in this leather thing and pour. So the man is saying, Bara la yo ram manayo, meaning, fill the water in here and please God. The moment Nizamud, let me read it. The moment Nizamuddin Aulia radiallahu ta'ala heard this, he asked Amir Khusru and myself the meaning of the word. He said, what this man is saying? Because it was Hindi, what it was? So Amir Khusru knew Hindi and Rajkumar Hardev knew Hindi. He said, kya ke hai? So he's saying, yeah, Hazur, they are saying, bring up the water for mankind and please Allah. He thought of the water of Ishq coming up. And he went, Allah, and he went into Wajd. Now, Rajkumar Hardev is saying, we had to carry on singing this. Add some Persian verses. Add some Arabic verses. Sing it for him. In the meanwhile, Khaja Iqbal, his khadim, went to the Khanka, came back with some kawals. And we had to sit there and we camped there for three days and three nights and we had Kawali on the spot. How many years ago? How many years? 700 years ago. Kawali with music. Who's listening to it? Khaja Nizamuddin Aulia. Hazrat Amir Khusro. Khaja Nasiruddin Chirag radiallahu ta'ala. All made haram? All did haram things? That's the question. All of them did haram things. I know. There are certain fatwas that were passed in India and Pakistan. A fatwa 
is only a temporary solution to a masla, meaning a problem. And fatwa is not wahi that comes from Allah. It is not hadith, the statement of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And if I don't follow the fatwa of a certain being, it doesn't mean I don't love him. Must I prove it to you? Because they say, oh, this imam passed this fatwa, you have to follow it. How many of you follow Hanafi Mazhab in reading namaz here? Just give me an indication. Hanafi? Shafi? Okay. So Hanafi is, do you follow the Shafi Mazhab in reading namaz? Do you follow their methodology? You love Imam Shafi? You love Imam Shafi. But you don't follow his Mazhab. So not following his fatwas doesn't mean you don't love him. You understand? Not following his fatwas doesn't mean you don't love him. You understand? We have the highest regards for all Imams, all Mujaddids. But we Chistis, we follow Khaja Nizam Mumayinuddin Chisti, Al Ajmeri radiallahu ta'ala. He's our Imam. What he did, we do. You understand? In South Africa, we follow Khaja Sufi Saab rahmatullah alayhi. What he did, we do. The Sabris follow Hazrat Sayyid Khaja. Who? Take his name. Who's your Imam in South Africa? Hazrat Sayyid Khalid Chabawa. You understand? He's your Imam. We follow them. We are a, a, a peer paras people. Mujhe hosha kab ki ruku ki? Mujhe kya khabar ti sujood ki? Tere naqshe pa ki talash di ke me juk raha ta namaz me. We don't know what sajda ruku and so forth. We look for the naqshe pa, the footprints of our peers. And where we find our footprints of our peers, we put our head down. Meri zindagi bhi ajeeb hai. Meri bandagi bhi ajeeb hai. Jaha mil gaya tare tera naqshe pa, waha mene sar ko juka diya. Understand? To tere hi sunna. Tujhi ko dekhna, tere hi sunna, tujh mein gum hona. Hakikat, mahrifat, ehle tariqat isko kehte hai. This is it. This is it. So, Khaja Saab came to India. He was from Persia. He saw the Indian Muslim, one thing you can't take out of them is baja, tabla, and Geet. Can you take it out of them? So he said, because of this, I can't take them out of Islam. So he says, Ya Allah, you gave me the commission of India via Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So I've come across this obstacle. What do I do here? So he says, easy. O oh, Khwaja, if you can make 9.9 .9 million Ashraful Makhlukat human beings to Musliman, why can't you make one Tabla to Musliman? Why can't you make one Harmonium Musliman? You understand? So make music halal. Because not one ayat of the Holy Quran, I can challenge you on this. Not one ayat of the Holy Quran says music is haram. The only thing that you quote is idle talk. And idle talk is not nothing to do with music. You understand? There is hadith, of course. The Holy Prophet heard certain music and he put his hand in his ears. And he said, may they be turned into monkeys and pigs. But when did this hadith come? When did it happen? This hadith was when the Holy Prophet ﷺ was listening to the kuffar of Makkah who were playing on clay pots and singing rude songs. On the other hand, read Hazrat Yahya Maneri, the 93rd letter of 100 letters. He was the muhaddis of Bihar. We're not talking of a small man here. Wali of Allah and muhaddis of Bihar. 100 letters he writes. The Holy Prophet ﷺ was worried. What's going to happen to the gunegar of my ummah? I know the good people will go to Jannah. Jibreel came and said, Don't worry, Ya Rasulullah. 
Allah is seeing you so sad. What happened? He said, I'm worried about, he said, Allah said, I must tell you, the gunegar of your ummah who make toba will go 500 years before the neck people. Huzur sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, is there anyone here who can sing? Happy occasion this. Who can sing? One guy said, I can sing. One of the sahaba. He said, sing a song. And the words of the song was, the scorpion of love has stung me with the poison of ishq. And I can feel ishq flowing in my whole system. The love of Allah, like a poison in my whole rug rug. You understand? Huzur got up and started dancing. He tore his kurta into hundreds of pieces. You know what's tearing your clothes? But not acting, huh? real wajd I'm talking about, not acting this. Real Sufiya Ikram in a state of hal or khud hal wale hai. Khud hal wale hai. Tore it into hundreds of pieces. Hazrat Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala is the narrator of this hadith. And he says, Huzur said, I must collect all these pieces. Hold it together. After the wajj, I handed it out to the Sahaba. They kept it as tabarruk. Now the explanation that the, that the tafsir of this hadith says, when Allah makes you shed your clothing, He sends to you a new jorah from Jannah. You understand? So all this can be explained. Even the foot movements, raks, foot movements, you'll see a true Sufi, he'll make illallah, illallah. Hazrat Gesu Daraz Bandana was explained this whole thing. What he says? Illallah. What it means? Everything under other than Allah under my feet. <laughs> Everything other than Allah under my feet. And I am soaring here in Suluk to reach Allah. So I'm warning these people. I told you I have license. We are fakirs, all lads. Sanad paai hai mene bhi, mehshar mein muh dikhane ki. Jabi pe khaake hai meri, khaja ki aastane ki. You understand? And when fakirs or lads have to start coming and acting like Malvi saabs too and speaking to you, it's necessary. Why? Why? We need to you to know that we are not fools. Don't make haram that which has been made halal from a long time ago. If you don't know, come ask. If you don't know, come and find out. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. May he give us strong love for Baba Sab, Baba Farid, Ganja Shakar, Go up till now to Pak Patan. In Ur's time, from the morning to the night, what you hear? What you hear? Kawali. Can you hear anything else? Because this is the mirage, this is the food, this is the way of the chistia. This is the way of the chistis. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. May Allah bless the Deen family for having the Urs of Baba Saab or Miladun Nabi. May Allah 